judgment. Praise the Lord. So our scriptures this morning, taken from 1 John 1, verse 6 to 10. And I have another one coming afterwards. It says, if we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. Next scripture I have is from Malachi 3 from verse 16. It says, Then they that fear the Lord spake often one to another, and the Lord hearkened and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord and that thought upon his name. Praise the Lord. This morning I just want to give us a brief encouragement on the importance of fellowship. The importance of fellowship. Um, we start with John where... The, he shows us that the real, the first fellowship that we really need to have is with Christ. And if we say, he says, that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, then we're not really telling the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. Praise God. And the blood of Jesus Christ is cleanses us. So sometimes we talk about the problem of fellowship and, you know, we need more unity in the body and, you know, what can we do to improve the fellowship of the saints? What John is showing to us here is that fellowship with the saints really is a factor of having fellowship with God. Yes. That it's easy for us to have fellowship with people who are in fellowship with the Lord. Um, if, if you are in fellowship with God and, and I am in fellowship with God, then we can't really relate to each other properly. We can't really have good conversations. If I'm not in fellowship and you're in fellowship, your mindset is completely different. You're I have a mentality. I didn't I Please meet yourself. Praise the Lord. If you're not participating at this point, I have nothing to say. Please go on mute. Bless you. So if, if, if I am in fellowship with Christ and you're not in fellowship, it's difficult for us to have conversation. It's like trying to... Um, I don't know if those, those of you who studied... Uh, maybe at university, um, when you begin to go deep into a subject, um, you begin to become familiar with the language of that subject or the discourse. And you can become very, very much accustomed with the discourse within philosophy. But if you have been studying maths, then you can't really talk to the person who's been studying philosophy, not at the level that he's at. The Bible says in another place that, you know, the, the carnal mind, cannot really comprehend the things of the spirit. You cannot have an unspiritual person really understanding spiritual things. And so fellowship is really a factor of how we are walking and talking with Christ. Are we in fellowship with him? Are we talking with the Lord? Because his attitude, I found out, is different from our attitude. And one of the things that changed my attitude um, growing up as a young Christian and having to go into university and different places of work and meeting people, you realize that the attitude that, that, that sometimes we have as church people is not the attitude of Christ. We can get pick up certain attitudes from the way we preach about a certain thing. And yes, because we, because we preach against sin doesn't mean we hate sinners. Oh man, we love the sinner, but we hate the sin. But when you only hear hard preaching, you can develop a hardness towards people of a certain disposition. Um, people walking in a certain type of sin, you, you be more skeptical and more careful the way you talk to that person. You might end up being more hateful. It's only being around people and actually having to go outside your door and outside the walls of your church and actually to be among sinners. Imagine Jesus was accused of being a wine bibber. He was accused because of how much he was around sinners. The harshness of Jesus in his ministry was, was only ever towards religious people. 
his hardest speeches was about religion. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. <laughs> right? He burned religious people all the time because they should have known better. But when it came to the sinner, they said he's a friend of sinners. Okay, so sometimes we, we, we really don't have the attitude of Christ. We really don't have the mind of Christ because we, we think it's more valuable to spend more time in a church building that sinners won't walk into than to go among sinners and spend time with them that they can actually receive salvation. I don't understand. You know, I, I, I've come across folks and I, I, I don't argue with them because there's some mindsets that you just can't change. Some of us, we, we get upset and I've seen this recently for a, a child of God to go to a sinner person's house or an event for unsaved family that makes them miss church. I heard a preacher recently getting mad saying, I can't believe you would miss church to go among sinners. <laughs> oh my God. Safe are the 90 and nine. You, you, you make church such an- Help us, Lord. You make church such an idol that to be among sinners, you think is a bad thing. <laughs> said, oh, do you think they'll come to church when they have their event? That's not the point. That's not the point. The attitude, so listen, when we are in fellowship with Christ, we, we, we see things differently. We see the world differently. We see sinners differently. We, we look at the workplace differently. Yeah, we, we see everything as a potential opportunity for a sinner to be saved and a life to be transformed. Man, we need to get in fellowship with Christ. There's just some people, I can't talk to them. I can't reason with them because I, the way I think is not the way they think. I can't talk to them like a friend. You know, you kind of have to just, you kind of have to behave a certain way to talk to certain people. Come down to the level. There's certain things you can't say. In one place, the Bible says you don't cast your pearls before swine. There's no point trying to be deep with somebody who's shallow. You just can't do it. You're not going to get anywhere. But then when you get to Malachi now, you see this. They that fear the Lord, they spake often one to another. Right? I remember Minister Reed and some people are wondering, how do these brothers know each other? It's just the Lord. He was visiting Canada. We're in the same service. And I said, wait, I'm going to St. Lucia next year on mission. He says, man, I'll come with you. <laughs> so he came. And if, if we didn't make ourselves go to bed at nighttime on mission, we'd have talked all night. But we knew we had to get up and pray the following day. They that feared the Lord, they spake often one to another. The saints, the saints were in fellowship with Christ, find it easy to talk. When you find people that don't have anything to say about God, I'm not saying you leave them alone. Maybe help them to try and develop the mind of Christ. Maybe lead them into being more like Christ. Bring them into prayer meeting. Bring them into Bible study. Let them try and begin to get the experience that you have had that has made you so much uh, wrapped up with God. So if we walk in the light, as he's in the light, we have fellowship with one another. That light is, is, is divine illumination. He says the entrance of his word gives light, gives understanding to the simple, right? We want the word of God to really enter the hearts of people that will be so wrapped up in God and his word, amen? It'll be like good food to us. For this, some of us, we just love a good message. We love good preaching. We love good teaching. It's like a good meal for us. We'd rather sit down in good Bible study than you take us to the best restaurant in town. We have, we have become desirous of God's word and we love it more than our necessary food. We understand it right now to be life-sustaining and life-affirming. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth's not in us. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And I'm going to just share my prayer points in because it's, it's kind of tied up in the word I want to give you as I finish up. Um, praying for the honesty that makes confession a culture. We have unfortunately made hiding the truth a culture in church. We've made masking a culture. So I, we are now good at not telling you that we have a problem. We're good at um, trying to hide the fact that there's problems in our house, right? This is un the unfortunate case of where the church is. We, we would rather hide our sin than confess it. We'd rather pretend there's not a problem than to say, Jesus, I have a Jesus. We want to pray for the honesty help, help that makes Lord. confession a culture. And let me tell you, it begins with leadership. 
It begins with leadership. I remember when I confessed to the church that my marriage nearly broke up. That some people were like, oh. but for others, Jesus. it was like, thank you. Now I can talk about what I'm going through. Now I can be honest because it seemed like every preacher was a superman. It seemed like every pastor never My God. Jesus. When we can begin to say, here is what I have gone through, you'll find the saints begin to say, okay, now I can trust that this ministry can help me because it's willing to be honest about real struggles and problems in life. If we can confess our sin, you know, the Bible says he's faithful and just, not only to forgive us, but to cleanse us. This is what we need. We need the cleansing. We need the freedom from the things that were holding us. It's not just forgiveness for doing the wrong. That's people want to apply grace to be constantly forgiven for doing the wrong thing. That's not what grace is about. Grace teaches you to deny ungodliness and worldly lust. Grace helps you to live godly and soberly in this present world. Grace is power to do what's right, not just a privilege to do what's wrong. That's what it is. Grace is the power to do the right thing. And so when we confess our sins, we receive the grace of forgiveness and the grace that, that cleanses. That means that the thing that's making me do the wrong gets purged out of me because I confessed it. Now I'm not weak to that thing. He's given me power over it. So we want, we want a, a, a culture of confession, right? That people can get deliverance in those environments. And for those of us, as I've said, who fear the Lord, amen, we, we must now, we must enhance our fellowship. Some people can't wait to go home after church. And I understand we have things to do, but some saints just love to just mingle. Or we love to talk. There is so much power in our coming together. They that fear the Lord, the Bible says, they spake often one to another. Then the Lord heard it. And the Lord, he, <laughs> a book of remembrance was written. Saints, when you stop to talk about the Lord, you must know a record is being made in heaven. A record is being made in heaven of those who keep the word of God in their mouth. And those that thought upon his name, just for those thinking upon his name. So I'm praying my last request here is for the increase of the word Thank of the Lord, Lord in the mouths of God's people. All right. The Bible says that this word shall not depart from your mouth, right? And, 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 not, and from the mouth of your seed, seed. We want the word of God to stay in our mouth. Um, there's something about when you see two people sitting down engaged. Listen, there's more than one way to evangelize. You can hold a Bible study in a mall, right? Nothing will stop you from having Bible study in a food court. When you see people engaged in conversation, it gets your attention. When you see people enjoying something, it gets your attention. There's more than one way to evangelize, saints. Let's get among the people. Let's make sure they can see us enjoying the word of God. They can see us enjoying praise, enjoying his presence, enjoying worship. This is our season to make an impact. Let's stay in fellowship with each other. It's important that we do that. The word fellowship I put there is it's about participation and sharing. We can't have church where it's about one man preaching. That's not good for us. It's not good for the growth of the body. There must be participation. There must be um, sharing. So we need forums where you can put in your, your two pence, as we say in England. You, we need for, forums where you can share, where you can testify. It's not good to have a church where it's just about coming to hear a preacher. That's, that's not church. That becomes a cult. Yes, Lord. It becomes a cult. Jesus. Who's the pastor there? Who's the pastor? No, it's not about there must be. The body must supply. The all joints must supply. A church that has good fellowship will make many preachers. <laughs> a church that knows how to share yeah, will make many missionaries okay so fellowship is important it's important for the growth of the body and it's important for young people coming up to see older people rapping in the word loving the word spending time in the word enjoying it sharing it loving it amen that's my encouragement to us this morning let's continue to stay in fellowship with the lord and with one another in jesus name